Hi, welcome <laughs> to our um, to the Delphi Creativity <laughs> fun Center. With Delphi. Yeah, fun with Delphi and glass, right? Right. So today we are going to um, talk about uh, making stepping stones. You know, I think it's spring, so what a great time, right, to make something for the garden. And uh, we're going to take you through uh, every step if we can, if we have enough time to do it. We're going to show you how to actually uh, assemble it, how to mix the concrete, how to pour it, how to pop one out. We got one in the wings ready to come on out. So, um, and if you have any questions, you know, while we're doing it, just make a comment in the section below, or you can always uh, email us at uh, Facebook at uh, DelphiGlass.com or message us on Instagram. Yeah, one other one. You did? Yeah. Oh, Facebook. Well, and Facebook. We oh, answer everywhere. Oh, the yeah. obvious one, Facebook, right? <laughs> so, um, well, I've got one sort of set up here, if you can see. I know Kaylee's uh, behind the camera there, and um, I've got one sort of set up, and I'm going to uh, disassemble it for just a little, a brief moment, because the, the technique that we're doing involves um, casting the concrete into a mold, and so yeah. I have a mold here, and what's going to happen is we're going to put the glass in the bottom of the mold, and then mix up and pour the concrete. When that sets up, we'll flip it over, and now the glass is going to be on top. And I think one of the reasons why we like that technique is that you'll end up with a really smooth surface, right? The glass and the concrete will be flush to your stepping stone, um, which I know, like for here, you know, we're in Michigan, so we get the uh, cold weather, and it's nice with there's not a lot of um, stuff on the surface, or it's uneven on the surface where water can get to it, right? So we're trying to. Uh, keep them nice and durable, especially during the colder months. So um, we're going to, uh, so what's really important is, and this I think is the trickiest part for people, is we have to do everything in reverse. So it's Since like an upside down cake, oh, yeah. for those of you who can relate to that, a pineapple upside down mm -hmm. cake, where everything goes in the bottom upside down and then you pour the batter on the top and when you pop it out you invert it back. So, right, yes, good job. exactly like yeah. that. Kind of and I was going to say, so why you do this, then I should. Um, yeah, you can show prepping the, yeah. prepping the mold, right? Well, so, yes, they don't need to watch. They'll watch you do oh, this. Yeah. But. Yeah. What we'll do is prep the mold beforehand, as, as Val was mentioning. We're going to use, we need some kind of a mold release so that the concrete just pops out easier. I mean, this is plastic, so the concrete really doesn't stick on it too well, but. If you do a bunch of them, eventually the concrete will scratch the inside of the plastic and then you, there'll come a day you won't be able to pop it out. So we're going to just use a little petroleum jelly. And yeah, and not much. It's just You just want to see a nice little film on there. So it's not a glob. It's just I get enough just to be able to smooth it on there and then I can show you just the very start of it. You can. But just like, once again, if you have a reference to baking and know that kind of thing, it's kind of the same way. I'm going to do the center, and I just have a little bit, and that's probably going to do the entire mold. But I always do pay a little extra attention to the corners, just like, like you would in baking, you know? Just make sure you get enough up into the, into the corners and then along the sides. And then that's really, see what I mean? How it just, you just barely see the film. That's really enough. If you get too much, it can kind of discolor the... Yeah, yeah I've had it kind of stain the uh -huh. concrete before or... Yeah. Or, or, or you can see the swirl of where you actually did the, the petroleum jelly into the concrete. I, I've seen that happen before. And this is highly technical. This is why I, I have to do this. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm not qualified. No, 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 no. You're not capable. You, I'm not trustworthy enough no. to do it. So um, if you can see the setup I have here, as I was mentioning before, so the trickiest part, I think, for people is that this has to be in reverse. So we uh, did this with this pre-cut koi fish. If you can see that here, it's actually one of the... Um, pre-cut glasses that we sell here at Delphi and um, which makes it real nice and easy and quick if you're trying to do a stepping stone and then we put in uh, some numbers because you know, how we have to do everything in reverse it, it sometimes it's hard to, to get that around your I know around my brain yeah. sometimes so this is the pattern right so if you see the pattern this is if I just lay the pattern down like this um, and then put all the glass down put it in the mold when we pop off the mold it's going to be in reverse right so I mean really won't matter with the fish. I mean, if the fish is backwards, but, but if you're doing numbers or letters, you know, you do welcome or your last name or something, obviously you don't want that backwards. So um, what really helps is to have a reverse copy of your pattern. I traced this out with a Sharpie, so now when I flip it over, I can see it in reverse, but if you can't see through your pattern, you could put it on a light box. That comes in really handy. Yeah. Um, sometimes just, just putting a it on a piece of, of yeah, white paper underneath it will make it easier to see the pattern. So. 
So I have my pattern. Really at this point, just a guide. I mean, you have your your outline of the square already on your pattern, so that you know where you have to stay within. But um, so it's not like you have to get them identically in the same place right now. You're just using that as a sort of a general. Area. Yeah, if you saw the pattern had a, a dark line around the outside, that as uh, Val was mentioning, that's like where our, we don't want to go beyond that because uh, you don't want the glass resting up against the edge of the mold. So we want it to leave a little bit of space around there. So there um, is one here, you just can't really see it, but there's a, yeah, a dark see. square under there. So as I put these on, so what I'm using here is a piece of um, adhesive backed vinyl. Uh, here at Delphi, we have a sandblast resist, which is nice. It's, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's sticky. I see it's sticking to my finger on this one side. Um, and so it's sticky side up. And then I'm going to take every piece of glass that I have and flip it over and then just stick it to the glass uh, so that... I can't really remember how I did this, though. There we go. I'm always, and we're leaving a little space, too. You want to make sure yeah. your space isn't too too narrow otherwise the mix won't get down in between and then you'll just have this air pocket between your glass yeah so. we'll see when i start doing the koi you'll see i'll probably leave a little bit more of a space here for the koi so again i know it doesn't uh, appear like it's that important but i am flipping every piece over so that we're seeing the back of the glass is what you want to see and as val mentioned it's mm -hmm. almost like you know when you're doing mosaics you want to leave a little bit of a gap for the grout we're going to do something really similar here with the um with these pieces so it leaves a little room for the uh, the I, I didn't, i'm doing a crowding job here so i'm going to slide my fin in down here but as val mentioned the pattern at this point is really just a reference i mean it just kind of gives you an idea of where you might want to place things um it the we've used contact paper before so that's another type of adhesive back vinyl you can use if you uh, don't have access to the sandblast resist mm -hmm. and that's easy to find too grocery stores and yeah so I can see that I'm just you know putting this all on there flipping everything over as we go um, you'll notice that we that our contact paper is a little larger than what we really need here's the actual uh, square yeah, that that's can a good one. show you a little bit because it actually so this glass is actually within the square and then another thing that's kind of important and you'll probably get there but while you're concentrating on that <laughs> I'll um, is that you don't want your glass pieces to get too far out to the edge. Because if you do, then that's a place where once you mix this, it's, it's fairly loose and it can bleed under there and then it can cover up your pieces of glass. So, so you want to kind of stay in from the, the edges a little bit so you can get a good seal. He'll show you how we kind of burnish it yeah, a little I, bit. Yeah, I, I think one of the things, uh, especially what can be confusing for people is when they buy the molds, they come in different sizes, and this is an eight inch mold. So the thinking is, wow, it's eight inches. I have eight inches of design space where I can put my project in. But really, uh, the design space here, as Val was showing you this black line that we've drawn beforehand, it's only six and seven eighths or something. So again, uh, we want to be inside. Ideally, you'd like about a half inch around the outside of your design of concrete so that again so just so the edges are durable of your stepping stone and you know the mold again it might be eight inches across here but at the bottom of the mold since the sides are tapered so that it's easier to pop the concrete out i mean it's probably only seven inches or so down here on the bottom i would guess i didn't, didn't actually measure it but so you can see i have things on here you know if you don't like how it looks right we can just easily pick stuff up and move it if i'm trying to make a little bit more of a gap in there if i wanted to see a little bit more gap i want to get one down here too where I can get the concrete to flow in a little bit better. Um, the next thing we're going to do then is trim down the uh, the vinyl and there's a couple of ways of doing it. You can do it with a pair of scissors. Uh, often in this situation we're going to, I'm just going to use an exacto knife that I'll grab this early, easier earlier so it makes it a lot easier. The um, the reason why is because you don't want, again this is one of those things where we don't want the contact paper bigger than the um than the bottom of the mold itself right? yeah because it will sorry i was well, no, I'm having a hard time operating this thing uh -huh. no, I mean, to step in and help me out. um yeah so you need it to be within the bottom so if it's if your contact paper is kind of sloppily cut or you use scissors and it's kind of jagged i mean that can actually cause an indentation in the top of your 
stone and it's not real attractive. So we try to keep, when we cut the, the contact paper, we try to keep it a real clean, sharp um, edge. And the same holds true for the size. If the size is too big and you put it down in here, then the corners of the contact paper will fold up into the corner and then it'll cause, you know, obvious it'll, you know, look kind of ripply and not as attractive. So, so it is kind of a big deal. And we just did this, like he said, we just decided our square was going to be six and seven eighths. And then we cut it, put it in the bottom, thought, oh, that looks fine. It leaves a nice border around it. And so it helps, you know, and then you can stay within it much easier when you kind of start with a template like that. Yeah, I know. I heard you say that. I mean, it is a good idea to try to at least try to cut your um, contact paper into a definite shape. I know. I, I know you said that, but like, if you if I yeah. cut all the way around it, it, it shows. And so I, I, our thinking is yeah, you'll see when we pop this one out. Yeah, you'll be able to see. We're trying to minimize what that looks like, right? So now, um, so here's the other. Here's the tricky part. Here's, that's yeah. another tricky part. This goes in the way it's sitting on the table is how we're going to place it in the mold. I know some people want to flip it over for some reason. They think they got to do it this way, but we're not. We're going to go uh, straight into the mold. So, if I pick it up and hold yeah, it, do you see how it. it's, um, it reads correctly, right? So I, I always do that real quick. Just one last look. I flip it over and go, yep, that says 160. So I know that that's going to be, you know, the, the correct way. Because right? we have one more opportunity to move something, right, if we don't like it. So um, then we can just put it in the mold. One of the nice things too about the Vaseline, so the Vaseline does a couple of things. One is it, again, it, it acts as, a, the, the Vaseline acts as a mold, as a release for the concrete, but it's slightly sticky. So when you put your contact paper in there, it stays a little bit. It's surprising how it doesn't just slide, you know, slide all over like you think. But so this gives us an opportunity to just kind of slide it um, to where we want it. I think uh, Keely probably got a decent picture of that. Uh, we we're going to mix up some of the, um, the concrete uh, for you. I think I'll let you do it. Um, all right. Sweet. So the uh, yeah, this is the um, stepping stone uh, stepping stone mold mix that uh, we sell at uh, at Delphi, right? So I mean, right. what, what there's a couple of great advantages to it. One is it's white. I mean, so it's really nice and, and it shows the glass off. I think really well. In particular, if you use glass that's a little transparent, um, you still can see the color when using the white one. Uh, it's a really fine mix, you know, regular concrete a lot of times has rocks in it and so sometimes that can, you know, trap more air bubbles or cause some more issues. This one is a really nice kind of fine powdery mix. I am going to wear uh, a mask, you know, while we mix, right, because if we're creating any kind of a dust, uh, we'll want to um, wear something so we don't breathe that dust in. It is also a really good idea, you know, to put on some safety glasses just so, again, I mean, you'll, it you'll powders see, up pretty yeah, good. It's so a little fine. bit of the powder kind of come out. It really so. does create a, a, a little bit of a dust cloud. Yeah, so a couple of ways of mixing this up, right? So um, the directions are on the box, and, and I actually did this one yesterday, and, and they're pretty true. I mean, I think that this mold, it says on the box, seven cups of the mix and 18 ounces of water, and that's pretty much what I did, and it, it, Really, this is how much it filled, which is fine. It could yeah, have gone a little good. higher, yep. but um, I think that's good. Yeah, I always tell people if they're going to be decorative, you know, if you're just putting them in your garden, you know, just to um, kind of uh, add some color and stuff to your garden area, they don't need to be as thick as the mold. You can actually get away with going about half the thickness of the mold. But if they're actually going to be actual stepping stones that people are going to walk on, then you, I usually recommend you, you pour them to the level of the mold if you can. But as Val mentioned, this is seven cups of, um, of, the, of the mix. And um, I think you said we could get a couple, right? I mean, yeah, they're, get, like, they're, yes. Out of the box. So this would be, a, I've used a total of 14 cups, and I think there's about a cup left in the box. So it easily would do two eight by eights, two eight by eight circles, or, you know, around that much. So. Yeah, I like to add a little bit of water at, at, at a time. And one of the, the um, tricky parts sometimes is getting water to the very bottom. Because um, as you're mixing, that seems like that's the area that always wants to hold, you know, the, the, the least amount of water in it, right? So it, you get these lumps in the bottom. So I, I like to kind of clear up the a bottom a little bit. Sometimes I'll start with adding the water, a little bit of water to the very bottom of the bucket, and then start adding the concrete that way. Um, as Val mentioned, it's like uh, not for the 
It's a great way of building up that one arm. Yep. You know, so. It's, it's, it looks so fine. I was actually kind of surprised at how I really had to oh, how did stir. It? Yeah, 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 stir it up, right? Yeah. I know, back in the day we were making stepping stones all the time. Oh my gosh. But I think I had one arm that was bigger than the other. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, this is, yeah, see, I told you, so you should just, no, I mean, don't. Cause, this makes cool for you. Well, you know, I would because I would be over it by now. <laughs> well, one of the things that is um, really important about concrete in particular and this type of product is that in, in order to um, get the durability, you really want to make the mixture just the correct. So follow the directions on the boxes that I was mentioning before, right? I mean, I, I know that the tendency, I know for me even, is sometimes to mix it a little thinner just because it's easier to work with, it's easier to mix. But um, then you run the risk of compromising the strength of the concrete. And uh, we think that's, you know, again, if you're, they're going to be outside or they're going to be use, used as actual stepping stones, it's really important that we get the mix just right. So. Okay. Yeah. We got to get it done today. Uh, this is like... I told you. Anyway, it's, it's, well, it's different than, than the sand mix concrete, kind of too, I think, that... I need one of those time-lapse photography things where oh, I just come right. back later and it's all mixed up. But now, now it's loosening up, right? Now you oh, can sure. give us some more... Yeah, again, what I'm, what I'm trying to do here is get out any lumps, right? So we want to try to make sure it's really well mixed. Um, the way that this product works is it's actually a chemical reaction that occurs between the water and the Portland cement that's in this product. And so if we get it all mixed together really quite well, it just, uh, again, it, you just get a more durable stepping stone, which is really the goal here. I mean, I have some stepping stones at home that are probably, man, they're probably, they're over 10 years so I've had outside, so. While Roy is mixing, does anyone have any questions? So that's just I do, are you about done? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Anyway. All right, so I'm gonna Ready. pour it in, but one of the things I always do first is, I'm gonna pour in just a small amount and uh, I'm going to do it almost like grouting. You'll notice I'm putting a glove on. And I'm going to take a little bit of this and I'm going to put it right where the design is at. We did have a question come in from Janet. Do you put any reinforcement such as wire mesh to strengthen oh. the concrete for use outdoors? Oh, 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 that is a great question. Mm -hmm. uh, I do not. No, <laughs> we don't. Oh, there you go. <laughs> No, no I, it's not. You know, what the, what, the, what the reinforcing does is actually doesn't strengthen the concrete. All it does is that if you get a crack in it, it holds it together so that it don't, doesn't continue to fall apart. Um, I, I've tried it many times and uh, trying to work with like chicken wire or some kind of metal mesh or even rebar is like, man, it's um, not, not as easy as it sounds trying to get that in there. So, if, so what I'm going to do here is... If you can, oh good, Kaylee's getting kind of close. If you can see like where the gaps are at, especially here in the body of the fish, you see where I'm using my finger, again, it's like grouting and I'm just filling in that gap. And what this is gonna do is minimize um, air bubbles that might get caught in there. So it'll make the cleanup a little easier. And you can see uh, when we pop out the other one what we mean by that. But that's usually pretty good. I mean, didn't have a lot of uh, gaps in there. So I'm just kind of rubbing my finger, just mainly right where the fish is at right, to do that. And then I'm gonna continue then and we'll just pour the rest of this in there. I mean, we've done, you know, much bigger ones than this before, right? Um, yeah, much bigger. I mean, we did um, a bench before that was, again, we haven't never really reinforced any of those.
And that was everything you guys mixed up, right? Yeah, pretty much, except, I mean, I could have taken another extra couple of minutes and scraped out the last bit, but. So we, um, so you can see how it sits in here, right? Now what we're gonna do is tap on the mold. You see just by tapping on the mold, how the, the concrete kind of settles and levels out. I usually kind of rotate it around. We'll do all sorts of tapping on this. You like uh -huh. screed the back of it? I, did, I actually, because I did this at home last night, or actually I did it early this morning, and um, I have an offset spatula, which would be really mm. nice to smooth out the top. So, yeah, if you want, if you look close here, sort of. So, the other thing I'm doing is see how I'm kind of I'm tapping on the sides of the mold, and, and you'll see that you will get a couple of air bubbles pop up and out. And again, the advantage here is, is just really just trying to make this the stepping stone stronger by uh, minimizing any air bubbles that might be in there. Uh, the other thing that we'll do is the term is called screeding here. I'll take my mask off. It's called screeding and that is we're going to rub across the back of it. Uh, Val was saying she used a spatula. Sometimes I've used even the, the back of the spoon sometimes like this to just kind of to level this out to get it a little bit smoother. Um, and then we'll we'll tap on it some more. I've taken a straight edge. A lot of times I have glass laying around. I'll just use a straight edge mm, of a piece of that glass, works good too. which yeah. works real well. And uh, it does a couple of things. One is it'll level the back out, but more importantly, I think, is that it also makes the edges a little cleaner so that they're um, a little firmer. And then we just tap on it for a little while, usually a few minutes. Um, after a, a couple of minutes, there's not much you can do yeah. to get air But you still out, continue so. to see little bubbles coming up. Not that they'd make a big difference, but they're still yeah, yeah, coming they up. Yeah, they kind of come up. One thing you don't want to do is um, wrap it like you would, uh, like a cake, right? You mix up cake batter and put it in and you, you tap on it to try to knock out the air bubbles. This is one thing we don't want to pick up and wrap down on top of the table. Main reason why is we don't want to disturb the glass that's in the bottom of the mold. Um, I, I've done it before actually, right. and then if concrete gets underneath the contact paper, then uh, you, yeah, it's not very good. So. No, yeah, yeah. so then we need to let this set up, right? So this isn't isn't going to be ready to pop out of the mold until I mean, about as early as you can get at it, it might be six or seven hours. Um, usually, we recommend something closer to twelve hours is usually the recommendation. A lot of it depends on you know uh, there's a, a wide variety of things, uh, temperature of the water you use to mix the concrete, the you know, how humid it is outside that day, those kind of things can affect it, but. Um, and we always try to go just a, a little bit shorter on the time. Yeah. So that we have an opportunity to maybe fill in. So if you do have a situation where between your pieces of glass, there's a void or, or a pocket, that nothing got down in there, then if we don't wait till it's completely dry, we have this little window where we could mix up a little bit um, and just take your finger and kind of smear it in, and hopefully the brick isn't dry enough that the new won't adhere or mend together, right? So, yep. so you're gonna we'll pop, pop this, this one, one out, right? So this is one that you poured earlier. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah, it really should pop out about that easy. I mean, if we did a nice job with the petroleum jelly, it should just pop out. And so, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say. So this is when. Sometimes people will look at it and go, oh, well, that just doesn't look very good at all. And it's because they forget that the contact paper is still on here. So we'll have to, we'll peel that off. But here's what we were talking about. You can see, can you see where the contact paper is? So that's why we kind of like that, to pay a little extra attention to your edges when you're using the contact paper. And sometimes to get this going, I try not to gouge it, but some- I, I grab it on the glass. Okay, good idea. Yeah, just kind of pry up a little bit of it so you can grab it and then, and then. Yeah, well, I can't do it with my glass. Yeah, and then we can just start pulling it up. Once, once you get a corner up, then it should just pop off pretty easily. We're just going to peel it back. You can see, well, you did a nice job with this one. There's, yeah. there's hardly any air bubbles, but you can see if you look real close, an air bubble here. Right here. There's a couple here, but yeah, that, and those, I, I can tell you, you can you could tap on it for 20 minutes and you'd still have air bubbles in it. It's impossible to get all the air bubbles out. So as we mentioned earlier, it's a good idea to try to pop it out early enough so you can fix air bubbles. I mean, if, if you wait longer than 12 hours, you might not be able to fix some of the air bubbles. So 
Uh, and then all we're doing is taking a little bit more of the concrete mix, um, adding a little water to it. Sometimes, um, do you have your sponge? I have it. Okay. Yeah, if, let, if this was older, let's pretend this was closer to 12 hours or so. A lot of times what I'll do is with a damp sponge is just come in and re-dampen the surface a little bit. And what that does is it just allows the stepping stone to grab the new mix that Val's going to put in there. Okay, ready? Yeah, this part is super exciting, so. I know it. You want to get like a miracle. So you got to wait a couple of minutes. Otherwise, if you go in with your sponge right now, it might pull it right back out. But that one was a little bit wet. That's right. You know, you actually want your mix here a wet. little wetter mm -hmm. than you normally would. Uh, again, because the thinking is that the, the stepping stone is probably already pretty dry and it'll want to suck all the water out of the, what you're trying to put on there now. But Anything else? No, I think that was it. That was good. Wait, I see that. A little bit up there. Now, now you're just being picky. She's got the eagle eye. Is that That's it? right. I figure I have to obsess about something. Right. Do you want to do this then? Yeah. And then we just come back in with a, with a uh, damp sponge, right? And I'm just going to come across the surface and we're just going to just wipe it off gently, right? And you can see that it really did a nice job of filling in that, I mean, those little bubbles that, that any air bubbles that we had in there. Now, the concrete really isn't strong until, it, you know, I mean, a few days, like seven days is what I've been told, right? So um, I, if, I wouldn't put it outside if there's a chance of frost or freezing, you know, for at least seven days. Um, I usually leave them in the house for at least 24 hours, you know, just to make sure that they're nice and firm. But usually uh, once we get beyond that, we can uh, put them outside. Oh, this was another one of the pre-cuts that, that uh, we have here at Delphi. And uh, it's for fusing. I mean, it's a fusible pre-cut. I mean, a lot of times, you know, I, people think they can't use those for stained glass or for mosaics, but it's still just glass. glass and so you can see how, how nice that they really work out. So It makes a quick little project, too. I mean, if for some reason you yeah. need something and I, I think they're cute I think it really looks cute and uh, you know of course you can cut your own glass and do your own designs and that's great but in a pinch this stuff sets up pretty quick and the pre-cuts make it kind of a breeze yeah too. they're really nice so yeah. well hopefully that, that you guys found that helpful if you have any questions you know feel free to get a hold of us you can email us at Facebook at DelphiGlass.com or you can message us at Instagram or at Facebook. Um, if you have ideas for other things you'd like us to do, I mean, just get a hold of us. We'd be happy to, you know, yep. to do that. We'll so, do it. And we'll be sure to share the finished stepping stone that we poured today tomorrow. Okay, good. Yeah. Good right. deal. We'll see you guys next time. Yep, thanks.